Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Propaganda Cast Shadowverse episode. My apologies for the delay in episodes. Basically, a maintenance happened. I wasn't prepared for that. I've kind of forgotten about it, which is really bad for me. And then the next day, I caught a crawl, which really left me absolutely exhausted, having done the other episode and such there. So, rather, that ended up delaying this episode a bit there. So, my apologies for that. But I'm not going to do any sort of larger segment. They don't seem to be popular, though. So, I'm just going to sort of just move on and just go straight to the battles. But, you know, overall... The Earthright deck hasn't changed, I think, sort of overall it works kind of nice. Again, what I want to do with Golem, so there's Golem Protection. You've got Gabriel here for extra pushes. That works kind of nice. For the tem Tempo deck, I've sort of worked a bit more. Not a lot, but basically sort of switched back some of the cards here for mate leaders because, you know, being able to draw now things a bit better since I cleared out some of the other, other officers. And I've also gone for an extra Shadowed Assassin. What I've removed is basically both of my White Generals. I've also had in another Floral Fencer. Basically, I removed the white generals because, well, Shadow Assassin is just going to do the job better. Simply because, while you might not be able to push the extra damage sent on turn 4, you'll be able to do more damage overall on those two turns because your board is more likely to survive. I mean, that's the difference here between white general. It does more damage right then and there, but it won't survive. So, I might say you're going to do two extra damage there. Next turn, though, you're going to do a lot less damage extra. Plus, with, the, of course, the Shadow Assassins, you know, can also more likely be able to get off my Rage General combo. Or tempo swing there synergy so in that regard i basically opted for more shadowed assassins also hopefully increased my chances versus dairy room which so far seems a bit mixed again rather depends on a bit of luck here and there as well what cards i get but we'll be off to the fighting here first a few matches of the tempo token sword and then some golem deck power oh hope you enjoy and here we go, we are up against Dragon, which is likely going to be Ramp Dragon, which can easily be a 50-50 thing. It depends basically on how good an opening hand I got. Here we got Rage Angel and Floor Fence. I don't really need either of them. Mainly I prefer not, but it's still a two drop, so I'd rather have it than not. We got Sketchy Knight and Sage Commander. Sage Commander, and not what we really need him now. We need is a one drop. Now, it's not what you call a one drop, that is in fact what you call a three drop, so that's a Bloody no use ass. At least we've got a two drop and pop made leader. He'll likely, if possible, try and then a pops to one of his uh, dragon oracles. He's got that one ramp up. Doesn't have anything there. That's uh, good. Right, Pompous Princess. Maybe with a bit of luck we get the quick blader and we do. Then we hit home for a bit of damage there. End the turn. Not the best side, I would prefer a one drop as well to support things, but uh, better than nothing. Got another ramp cart there. Uh, I think I'll just. Um, I don't want to deal with that because I don't want him to be able to hit up faster, so I want to attack into that, you know. Cause him to pop that one on his own turn. I mean, if he gets Dragon, well, I can clear out a lot, but the problem is he's going to be able to clear out a lot no matter what, so. Best we'll just try and aim for the best here. Pull up the board as much as possible. And in case he doesn't have Dragon Warrior, and then maybe have a chance of popping Enraged General on the next turn or something like that. We'll have to see, but Dragon Warrior is definitely going to give me a headache, a bad day. Plus, I mean, with this, either way, you can know, play next turn. The. Ha! Ah. That's interesting. That is interesting to say the least. Oh. So close we have to play the Enraged General, but ultimately it can't. So what do we do here? I mean, you can play Floral Fence while well, that, but again, if he gets, you know, Salamander Breath, I'm in a lot of trouble. Well, I'm going to be in trouble either way because then I'm going to sell and punch him to get his Overflow Active right away. This has not been the best hand for me again. Like a one drop, not the best two drop. A bit rough here. Yeah. Overall, I think Floral Fence is the best choice here. Yeah, I mean, assume he doesn't have Salamander's Breath of Least Hope for it. Otherwise, most of the options are kind of rubbish as well. But at this rate, I need to sort of quickly do something just big board wise. Otherwise, I'm going to get hit really hard soon enough with a Bahamut or something. Otherwise, big could be Satan as well. Please, let not. Alright, small chance, but he could easily just be drawing for it. I just have it in his hand. He just wants to draw first. Please, no Salamander Breath. Please, no Salamander Breath. It's a really annoying board clear. Well, most of the board clears are annoying for Swordcraft since they are very much reliant on, you know, board control. Hence, Boardcraft, Swordcraft. Rhymes as well. 
Alright, he doesn't have it. He's just drawing more cards. Draconic Fervor heals up. He'll likely try and trade into my Floral Fencer. Normally I play the Enraged General here, but I want to be pushing more damage now. I mean, if here I could play in Sh Shadow of the Sands, but that's not really what I want. Again, I want to push this. Decrease the chance here, but then it'll follow up, you know, Salamander's Breath does something horrible to me. So will evolve here. That means all of this board is now a lot more resistant to a board clear, and with this we do a lot of damage to him. And I also got Albert here hanging back, which can further sort of utilize for some of them, maybe finishing him off. But over with this, I'm in a pretty good situation. I don't think there's so much you can actually do to stop this. It's basically one of the weaknesses of Dragoncraft at the moment. They sort of quickly run out. If they don't have the ball clears or a big fat ward, they can run into what is known as trouble. In this case, he had neither. And he couldn't quite get off to some of the big stuff there at the end fast either. But he was able to get a lot of card draw off. Oh! He's the OTK dragon! Ow! Oh. OTK! One turn kill! Oh! You see those from time to time. There you go, that was a victory. Didn't get to play the Enraged General, but in this case, again, I was assuming I was racing against a Ramp Dragon, so while Enraged General was nice, I'd rather sort of be able to just fit more damage right away. I'd have been able to play him sooner, though, I would have done that, but at that stage, the Sage Commander made a lot more sense with that kind of board. But there you go, OTK Dragon. Did not expect that one. It can be a bit hard to tell, but there you go. Shadowcraft. This is one of the tougher matchups for this deck. Especially going second, since you can easily just react to what I do. I'm assuming this is not going to be aggro. So I'm just going to try and, you know, push ahead as fast as possible. But I'm not liking my arts at the moment. I mean, it can go sort of 50 50. They sort of get a rubbish hand I win, but if not, I'm in trouble. And that one, for example, can easily contest the quick blader. <laughs> So this is not good. I got no two drops either. Oh, this is actually aggro. This is actually aggro. You don't see skeleton fun in anything but aggro sword. So I'm going to trade into that to buy me some time, then I'll use Fencer to be able to sort of more efficiently trade ours at play Pompous Princes, but with this I sort of want to aim for more efficient trading. Another Skeleton Finder there. Actually I want to trade into that then. In that regard, Floral Fencer is going to be great, plus I can follow up with Monica there to further gain board control, which has also been great in other matches, but I will. Soul Conversion, more spell power, but also help draw cards. We got that one. Another Skull Beast. Mm. Yeah, I think I'll play Floral Fencer now, simply because, well, right now it's not going to help versus that one a lot. On next turn, then, I can combo it with a Navy Lieutenant. Just sort of do a lot of damage. And now I can just build up a really big, you know, ward wall, which he won't be able to deal with, which is rather the intended goal. Out of death. Sucks, but you know. And he's going in there for, for damage. That's going to hurt. That is aggro shadow with the, that little combo there for you. I could also just Monica it at the moment. Be a lot more efficient. I think I'll do that. I 
also gives you more damage on board. And that regard, Mon is sort of good for those things, just clearing up those kind of obstacles. So Acro Shadow, you don't see that as much, I think, as much as the sort of more control range. So Acro Shadow is good in particular versus uh, Tempo Daria. It is pretty good. So we'll have to see what he does next. Cerberus he will likely evolve that one into my Monica there to deal with that one. And probably pop something on one of my 2-2s, or maybe on my face. There we go, one of the 2-2-2s two -two there. And in this case, I will then pop the Enraged General. And that as well. And with this, I am very much threatening lethal. There shouldn't be any way he can actually do 11 damage in one turn, whereas again he has to worry about even me doing 2 damage. And with that, another victory. Huzzah! And not to get the more golemy action here. A bit more tricky though. This is Dragon again, that's gonna be... Yeah. We'll see. Dwarf Alchemist, Red Hot, we got Elementary Alchemy. So there's other got a decent opening curve. We can actually put something out on the board. Got Veteran Alchemist as well. We'll have to see though what kind he is. I mean, there are a few sort of Dragon variants. The most common is kind of Ramp Dragon. There's also the OTK version, as you saw there in the first match of the episode. Pop out Dwarf Alchemist. Simply because he can actually fit in some damage. I mean, cart draw is nice, but right now I don't need that, I just need more on the board. I need to pressure him. I need to hit him hard. Bell Ringer Angel. Hmm. I'm tempted to just play Red Holt Ritual and this will just be able to push damage further. Got that one. I can always play Veteran Alchemist in the next turn. Sure, I won't need the healing, but you know, it's sort of. Fits the tempo play on curve, which also works. Or, what I do is, I petrify that one and prevent him from ramping up. <laughs> Take that. Behold the power of my magic. It renders your last words null. Now ramps up anyways. Mm, could it be Discard Dragon? Possibly. Go for this one since it helped build up a board. For the Golem. And of course also is up for something there with the Golem Protection. I'll need to play down some Earth runes to sort of get that work Earth rights. Still, that is all of a sudden a lot of damage he got on board for him to deal with. And even then, he has to deal with the Golem first before he can deal with the Rami here. The schizophrenic Golem Witch. I know schizophrenic. Multiple personality, I think, is sort of the more right word. Huh. This is the OTK version, I think. He's looking for the, um... Those things. He's looking for those things. Yeah. The Wild Fang Dragon Newt. So it's basically sort of searching for that, so that's basically what I have to worry about there. I actually put it up like this. I don't need the healing. I don't want to spend an Earth Fright, so I'll just... pop that one out. Evolve into that one. Into that. Teach the creation, draw a card, put up something there, and hit damage. Ooh. Gabriel! Yeah, that could very well be GG there, actually, unless he clears the entire board. I mean. Actually, I need that one to survive. But if it survives, I just Gabriel and a win. Just BAM! Gives plus four, plus three. That'll be nine, and then just murder. I mean, already got lethal. 
So he has to do something. The question is, what will he do? Will he just try and deal with that one? Will he try and deal with that one? Or will he try to build up a wall of wards? I mean, there's a few options here for our friend to consider here. Oh. Behold my beard. It is mighty. Yours is weak. Right. Oh. That's what <laughs> well, I got two Gabriels. I'm spoiled for choice. And there we go. Quick victory here. That's basically why I care Gabriel as well as just a quick push in damage there. In that regard, Gabriel is pretty handy for that, actually. He gives some very big pushes. Right, Shadowcraft versus my Golem deck. That's going to be interesting. If this is the control version, the acro version, it could go very differently. Don't need that, don't need that. Petrification is very good here. Since a lot of it runs on last words, which case, you know, being able to petrify and deny that is um, pretty good. And that got Calamitous Curse later down the road. It's also going to be very good. Okay, that's aggro. That's aggro. We're going to need the Dwarf Alchemist out as soon as possible, for starters. I mean, if you see a Goblin from any deck, I can, with um, near certainty, guarantee it's going to be aggro. I'm going to pop this one here. Because he's just going to ignore my Dwarf Alchemist, so it's more important I can just sort of lock that down fast. <laughs> I have to deal with that. The problem is it means I have a weak turn 4. So I can't... I mean, otherwise I can't Remy and Remy right away, but the problem is I'll take a lot of damage if I don't. So... I think I'll do that. And we're never going to do to lessen damage and that thing can overall just end up doing 5 damage at least. So... Yep, gotta do what I can do. Hopefully I get another ritual there. Alright, he just bops that one because you know he can't do more damage, he wants more shadows for other things. But also he wants to draw more cards. In that regard, aggro shadow has an advantage over a lot of other aggro decks which is... It has pretty good card draw there with that soul conversion spell. It tends to work pretty well for them. So again, we gotta pop that one here. Give all that to trade into that. Also draws another card. Maybe something to use together with... Uh... Oh, Professor of Taboos, he's nice. Pop that one here. Ancient Alchemist, not bad, but I rather want to pop Remy and Remy first because that one gives me a Guardian Golem. Spider to the Sergeant. Goblin. Plus with Remy and Remy. Oh, hello. Well, Calamitous Curse I can easily use next turn if I have to. It's just Remy and Remy right now is going to be more useful. Pop an Earth right, so if I have to, I can use Calamitous Curse as sort of a backup, or I can use Golem Protection, I can use Professor of Taboos. So I've got a lot of options here, actually. I mean, I'm basically sort of slowing him down in terms of pace. Slowly but surely, crashing him. Behold the power of my golems! Inanimate objects versus yours! Formerly animated objects for the most part. I don't know why the go goblins are there. That is an interesting card. Basically, whatever you sort of something dies. Oh, he pops that one and kills that. That also works. So, what will he do? Alright, he'll clear up with that. I think I'll just Calamitous Curse that. Much easier. Granted, I won't be able to sort of immediately use any of the other things I got there, but uh, he seems to be building up power, in which case we... 
do the same. Pop up a few clay golems, but also importantly the earth rights. Honestly, I got no idea what he's planning here. I'm a bit worried because of that, to be honest. I think what I will do is I will Remy and Remy up. Since that's the one that's not going to fill my card hand up with golems, which you can't really afford at the moment. And then I can next turn golem protection, thus buffing that one up plus the other. I'm not sure what this guy's playing at. He's trying to build up for some kind of combo. That much I can tell, but beyond that it's a bit less clear what he's added here at the moment. Skeleton Knight. I mean, he's shifted gears entirely. Go. <laughs> yeah, the power of boosted golems. Two five fives. Beat that one, you corpse loving girl. The power of pure magic and steel. There we go. That was a bit weird though there at the end, that was a bit weird. And there we go, the battles for today. Hopefully they were of interest to you. And were some fun there. I shall... Well, I haven't really updated the one here for the Golem deck, but uh, the other one I will post the updated link for in the uh, video description. So, cheers everybody for joining and hope you enjoyed this episode. If you didn't know, subscribe, like, share and comment on it. This is Imperial Dane signing off. Bye.